Meanwhile, uh, the president said to meet with Democratic leaders Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer in the Oval Office next week, ostensibly to work on something they can find mutual agreement, that is, an infrastructure plan. Uh, but that might be easier said than done. What can we expect from all of this? Joining me now, CPA and market analyst Dan Geltrude. We've also got Jonas Max Ferris back with us, Payne Capital Management, Senior Wealth Advisor, Michelle McKinnon. Um, it might be a political show, Michelle, but could they actually cobble together something that resembles an infrastructure plan? I mean, it would be great news, Neil, because let's face it, the only way we get long term economic growth is either a boom to the population. And I'm childbearing years and I'm not having kids anytime soon. A lot of my millennial friends are not having kids anytime soon. Or we get productivity. You can get productivity through what, infrastructure what, spending. What would infrastructure have to do with whether you have kids or not? Uh, you get growth, either <laughs> population growth I got or productivity. I see what you can you get did infrastructure there. There All right. and productivity. You're in good shape. Jonas, what do you think? Neil, you know, I don't know if you remember a lot of kids are conceived in cars. You need roads for cars. <laughs> oh, I, I see. <laughs> now, there we go. Isn't that parking lots? Well, we're a family show. <laughs> <laughs> now it's the car is the charge of the car right now because there's no electric chargers around, so we had to pull over. Okay, getting back to the point, I actually thought there was going to be an inter infrastructure plan by now because it was, A, something both sides agree on. It has the FDR, New Deal qualities, but also Trump is a construction guy. It's the one thing he really is an expert on. And it's that, expensive, though. Yeah, well, okay, I was hoping there would be some sort of plan with, you know, from private thing, tolls, paying for it, borrowing money, whatever. The problem is there is no plan from either side that people could l get onto. I think that's why it won't get done. Not, not so much the infight. I think there could be agreement on it. I just don't see a tangible large-scale plan Trump was talking about. At first, I think a trillion and a half dollar tenure plan, then down to a trillion. I don't think we'll even get a few hundred billion. It needs to be in the T's because, as you see in New York City, some of these projects are tens of billions of dollars that are very small projects. So for the whole country to really radically improve and get up to the standards of things going on in China and Europe, it would take that kind of money, and there's no real tangible plan. Well, what I, first of all, I, I think we're in need of fixing a lot of roads and bridges and, and working on 5G and then rolling out the network and then utilities and the rest. I get that. But I also know just in, in roads and tolls, from, we get from those, we get $14 billion there. The Highway Trust Fund add uh, expenses there, individual states at the federal level, better than $150 billion. I would first like to know, where's that money going before we start piling more money in? Well, it's a good question, Neil, as to where all this money goes that we tax and it seems to just disappear into the black hole. You know, in 2018, President Trump made a suggestion and he said that let's go with a 25 cent increase in the gas tax to put towards infrastructure, specifically towards infrastructure. Now, we haven't raised anything on fuel tax federally since 1993. Federal fuel tax is only at 18.4 cents. So we do the have some room there. The states have raised their own taxes. Yes, but they have. Right, the, on the federal the, level, not. The, the, the average state is taxing fuel at 28 cents. So there is some room there. Now, I don't like taxes, but infrastructure is critical. So we have to do something. I don't believe we're going to make cuts in other places to allocate the money to infrastructure. So I think the best thing we may be able to do is a fuel tax. Well, what I, worries I me is it's a slow I think it, needs it, gets to be more to be a, it gets to be a slush fund. I, I honestly think it, it's financing. I mean, we have extremely long, long-term rates. The 10 years at 2.5, the 30 years at 3%. I mean, now's the time to potentially get more debt and finance this infrastructure. You get more infrastructure, you create more growth, that's going to help pay down the debt. All right. So you argue that it would pay for itself. Yes. Just going ahead and paying as long for as it we now. invest in the right infrastructure. Well, no, that, that's really history the big has key. Show, history has shown us that the federal government is not really too good right. at doing <laughs> what, what you said. I do agree. Look, if you look at any business when they're going to have capital improvement that way, they're going to look at financing. So in theory, you're right from the standpoint of let's go about it that way. But the federal government isn't fiscally responsible. Well, a lot enough. of states, even oh, New Jersey okay. has this. They have these quasi-public-private partnerships where you raise some money and then, and then businesses will kick in some money after that. Uh, hope springs eternal, but but it usually doesn't deliver. Uh, yeah, I don't. There's, look, I think the, the, it's a myth that infrastructure pays for itself or education spending. But those are all Democrat myths along the lines of Republicans saying all tax cuts pay for themselves. That's not really true. You do have to finance part of it. Yeah, there are deals 
that have a, a obvious revenue source, like roads to us at an airport in New York but City. But people realize we have no money now, right? Right, so we would need a tax. And I think actually Trump would be more open to that. I think actually Republicans hold him back from some of his plans because he, they don't like how he would finance them. And they're always reminding them, as we heard in the Woodward book, well, you're a Republican, you can't do that. I think Trump's actually Well, more they're open fine to ones to lecture anyone on, on right. fiscal propriety, right? I mean, they've, they've sent deficits soaring. And right, but as long as you're not raising about taxes a on a trillion dollar one to him and he grudgingly signed off it, I'm not giving him a pass. But I'm certainly not saying Republicans are the white knights here. I, I would blame the party more than him for the expanding deficit because they they don't care what happens as long as you don't raise taxes. Well, on this your, happened on your with him controlling the White House and them controlling the House and the Senate, and they 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 ran up debt at a pace so far faster than Barack Obama and the Democrats did. So I don't trust either party to address it. Leaving that said. It, this could be political cover as well, right? Absolutely. If you can both say we met, we talked, we discussed infrastructure, we discussed this so that we're not all focused on Mueller hearings or, uh, you know, the wall and all of that to say that we can walk and chew gum at the same time. And Trump did say that he wanted infrastructure. So, I mean, he, he usually likes to say that he's um, he's good on what he says. I mean, and he absolutely promised infrastructure. So well, the I mean, wall we'll, is we'll infrastructure, see. right? The wall is infrastructure. Yeah, I wow. guess you could say it is, but I don't think we're going to be driving on the wall. So I think really with our bridges and roads but falling if we improve apart. the grid and make the grid more efficient, all that, that's part of that too, right? Sure it is. Look, yeah. Neil, here's what the compromise is going to be. Both parties are going to agree to spend more money and increase the national debt. That's not compromise, but that's compromise in Washington. All right. We shall see. All